Hi there, I wanted to give a quick overview of the Unity UI system. So if anybody wants to try to dive in, they can have this as a bit of a springboard to it. So I want to walk through what is the UI system. I want to walk through creating new elements, how to add a sprite, and then how to manipulate that sprite, how to add different mechanics to it, um, like animations or like buttons, um, how to save any type of sprite that you want as like a prefab, and then how to store that as a prefab, and then how to play the game so that we can see what you've made. So first, um, I'm going to be using my Quidditch game as an example here. There's not a lot going on. We have a couple of different layers through here. Um, but first, I wanted to look at our canvas, which is where most of our UI elements are going to be living. We also have an event system, which is a way to track what is happening on the screen. So if I were to hit play real quick, which is up here in the center middle of the screen, you can see I can hover over these buttons and they can change their colors. I can press and then it will open up a different set of menus. You can press it again, it opens a different set, or you can hit back and then you can reset everything and then you can go into different menus. So all of this is through the UI system. So how we can build upon that is by um, creating elements. So if you don't have this canvas here, you can do a right click and you can come down here to UI and then you can create your canvas and then you can right click UI and you can create like an image for it. Or if you create an image and you don't have a canvas, then it will automatically create a canvas for you. But since we already have this canvas, I'm going to go ahead and do it here. So you could do right click UI and let's do an image here. So you can see this image appears right in the middle of the screen. You can either type right in here of test image and that will update the name of the asset that you are tweaking here and it also tweaks it up here you can also tweak it up here so if we were to just put in image up here then it will update right down here so um, a couple ways that you can manipulate this is through um, you can either try to move it with this tool right over here and you can see we're on two axes here because we're in a 2d environment if you want to look at it in a 3d environment then you can uncheck this 2D box right up here. But if you were to select this move button right here, you could move it along um, the X axis here, or you can also move it along the Y axis right up here. You can press Control Z to undo anything. If you want to rotate it, that's what this rotate tool over here is for. And so you can grab it along this axis, or you can grab it along this axis, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can grab it along this axis as well. You can also overwrite them over here as well. So if we want to have a rotation of zero and a rotation of 45 and a rotation of zero, then you can see our um, little image is rotated along the Y axis right now. So let's do that. We'll go back to our 2D mode right up here. And then you can also try to scale it. So this is usually used for 3D items because you can scale it in all three directions if you're to go this way with it. But you can see that along the Z axis, nothing is really changing. So for UI, um, I mean, we can do it with an X this way or with the Y this way. We can also manipulate it over here if we want to do like five or if we want to do it by like five. Usually for UI though, I tend to use this button right down here, which is our rect tool. And this creates these four little dots in the corner here. And then you could just click and drag and this also acts as scaling, and then you can see it appearing in game. If you want to see how it will appear in game, you can go up here to this little game button right up here, and you can see that this image will be right in the middle of the screen there. So if we want to like add an asset, because this is um, a white box, which I mean, it could be useful, we can come over here to our source image here and we can select a sprite. So we can come in here and we can press this little button right here and it will pull up the different sprites that you currently have in the game. By default, it has a handful of different items that you have in there. So like if we wanted to have like a rounded box right there, or if we wanted to create like a circle, um, or if we wanted the standard white box there, if we want a different type of circle, we can do that. However, if we're like, yeah, I want something different. Then um, I have a Quidditch hoops asset right over here. Um, I'm just going to drag it in. This can be a JPEG or a PNG. So you could just drag it and drop it into your assets folder right down here. And then you can come up here or after you click on the asset right down here, you'll see this little menu appear as an inspector over here. Make sure it is type sprite right up here. And if it's not, then you can click on it and change the drop down up here to be sprite. You would press apply there. Now let's try to click on our image right down here. Let's see, where did this land in my list? I think it's this one right here. 
So we can go into the UI sprite in here, and we can try to find our Quidditch hoops right there. And then you can see that the Quidditch hoops appear in the middle of the screen. So we can also like change the scale of it. We can say, nope, I want it to face the other way. So you can do like spin it 180 degrees that way. Um, but you can have lots of different changes with this, um, however you see fit. Now, if we want to add different mechanics to this type of asset, let's let's just nickname this asset for the uh, case of this video. We can right click and we can try to build upon this. So if we wanted to have like a different image, so we can have it kind of be nested inside of it. So that way um, this acts as our parent and then this acts as our child. So if we click on the child, we can go ahead and move it wherever we want. But if it's parented under um, the main parent, then as you move the parent, it will move with the child just like that. So let's say we want to create a type of button that has like a text area, and then it has a little image on the left-hand side. So we can take this, we could squash it down just a little bit. You can see that the child is also getting squashed along with it. We can move this right over here. We can scale that down a little bit. Let's say I want to have this image have the hoops and this one be um, like our generic box right down here. Let's say we want a rounded box this time. And if you're like, man, I don't really want a white box right through here, then you can click the color right in here. And then you can drag that around to get the different type of color that you're looking for. You can also change the alpha level right down here, which changes the transparency. So you can drag that back up and you can see it slowly starts to fade in that way. And if you want to have words on it, you can right click and go UI. And then you can do the uh, text mesh pro right down here, this text. And you can see that it appears just like that. And I think we have our asset turned around 180 degrees. So our child is inheriting that negative 180 degrees, so it's facing the opposite way of what do we want. So we can go ahead and pivot that 180 degrees. We can say this is a test, just like that. And then you can move it wherever you would like. You can change the font by coming down here to this font asset, and you can change it to any type that you have loaded into your project. So let's stick with this magical one right here. You can change the size of the font with this font size area. So if we were to do like 100, you can see that it exceeds the text box. But if you're like, I want it to be as big as possible without exceeding the text box, then you can hit this auto size, and then it will try to fit into that box as um, whatever you have determined the box to be. Let's come back down here and grab that, and we'll scale that up just a little bit more. Shrink that down a little bit. Now let's say we want this uh, asset to be a button. Let's first, let's center this text and like put it into the middle. There we go, there we go. Let's say we want this to be a button. So we can come in here to our asset, this main level right up here, and we can do add component and we can type in button just like that. And it adds quite a few different elements right in here. So we can have it be like if we pass over it, we can have it be a different color. And then if we press it, we can have it be a different color. Now that we have our button functioning, we can go ahead and tell it that we want it to do something. So right down here under the button category, we have this on click event. So that comes from our scripting. So we have a list of scripts right down here. Let's say I want to create a new script and then we'll go C sharp script and we'll go button test. So wait for that to open up here in Visual Studio. Now inside of Visual Studio, you're needing this function to be public. So that way the game can kind of reach into it and grab it and then bring it back. So we have Visual Studio opening up over here. So let's say we want this to be a public void button test click. So when we press the button, we want it to do a print and we can say button pressed. So now if we were to go into the game here, we can drag that button test script onto any object that we want to. So we could do it on top of the asset itself. So we can drag this wherever it went onto button test onto our asset. And then we can press the plus arrow right down here and we can drag our script onto there. And then we can say, I want you to do the button test script and I want you to do the button test click right down there. So that way, if we were to hit play, 
Then if we were to click, we should see in our console that the print statement went through. Now it doesn't have to be on the um, asset itself, so we can remove this. And let's say we want to put it onto this button right up here. So if we were to take this button test and drag it down here, we can still grab our asset here and we can say, hey, I want you to listen to this game object and I want you to listen to that particular script. And now if we were to hit play, we can press it and then we can still see that it still prints the console log right down there. Now, if we want to get a little bit more advanced, we can do some animation with it. So you can press the asset that you're currently working on and then you can do control six, which opens our animation window. And then you can press create and then you could just find wherever you want to save this animation. So we can just do new anim. And then let's see if there's a way I can do this without hiding everything here. You want to make sure that your record button is pressed right up here. And then you can either scale it, you can do the change of rotation, you can do the change of color, you can do whatever you want to the asset. Just know that it will be um, in correspondence to the animation itself. So if we want to say, I want this to be its starting position right down here, then it will lock it right down there. And then if we were to slide this forward like a second and a half, and we want it to go up to here, and then we want it to fade out in color along the way there, we can do that. So then if we were to come back here and hit play, then we can see that it fades out through there. And now you can see inside of our asset, we have this little animator right down here so that we can always see what that asset is. And if you want to open up the um, animator, then you can open that up. You can see all the different assets that are tied to it. And then inside of the individual asset, you can say, I want you to loop or I want you to not loop. And then you can also uh, determine how fast you want this to be. If you want it to be super slow or if you want it to be like crazy fast, then you can increase it there. So that's a quick way to do animations and a quick way to create assets. If you want to have a duplicated asset that you're going to be using a whole bunch. So like if we were to have, uh, let's say if I were to close this menu, which is our menu right down here, you can see what I am selecting here. There's a menu sitting behind it. So if I were to press this button right up here, it will turn it off and it will display whatever is currently sitting behind it. So I have a ton of buttons right through here. If I wanted to have a similar type of button uh, based on whatever menu is currently showing, I can take whatever button I want to make as like uh, the one that I want to use quite frequently. And then I can drag it into my assets folder right down here. And that is creating a prefab for it. And you can see the color changed up here to blue. So now I can delete it from the scene and I can also bring it back into the scene and it will stay the exact same as it was before. So it's a way that you can create different types of assets, or I guess multiple copies of the asset without having to change very much at all with it. And it also allows you a quick and easy way to, let's say we want to increase the scale of this to be like three and three and three. Then you can see once we change the prefab, then you'll change it inside of the scene as well. So we can delete it from the scene, drag a new one, let's say there. And then you can see it appears in the middle of the screen there. So that's kind of a quick way to the UI system of Unity.